Hi, my name's Sam and this is Wrinkle Wrinkle Little Star. I am a 41 year old mum to two boys and I'm doing my own little bit to address ageism on the internet by providing another older face on the internet. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about why I'm back. So I started Wrinkle Wrinkle Little Star ages ago. I think when I had Elliot, my firstborn, I was 35 and I was classed as a geriatric mother even back then. I had Jake when I was 39, so I was even older, and now I'm 41, so definitely a geriatric mother, surely. Um, obviously, the term is not particularly nice, um, and I was lucky enough not to be branded with it too often, but it was insinuated occasionally. Um, I wasn't a fan of it, and I decided to start up Wrinkle and Wrinkle Wrinkle Little Star um, as a way of kind of addressing that, and it was a bit of fun while I was on maternity leave. I've dipped in and out of it throughout the years, and more recently took about six months off to concentrate on my own mental health and getting things sorted. Um, there's a separate video on that that you can watch and I will link that below. I did do a short video on Instagram about the reasons why I was restarting Wrinkle Wrinkle Little Star. An article in Grazia magazine had spoken about how the cast from Sex and the City with the remake um, and just like that had basically received negative comments online about their appearance and the fact that they had aged. Wow, people age, fancy that. So there was comments uh, saying, oh, dye your hair, you look old as F, all that kind of negative crap that men don't seem to get, but women do. So that was one reason, that kind of stuff. But I also started doing a bit of research because I thought, am I imagining the representation thing? Maybe there are lots of older women represented out there and I'm just missing it. From my perspective, I think there are older women represented. I don't always think they're represented in the way that I would want them to be. So personally, if I like look at some of the magazines that you can buy, um, they're older ladies, but they're kind of like a traditional older lady. Does that make any sense? It's like that cute granny kind of thing. I don't, I want to be a cute granny as in, you know, oh, the kids want to come to me and I'm nice, but I don't just want to be a cute granny. There's more layers to me. So yeah, I started doing a bit of research and I found some interesting studies. I made some notes. So the first thing I was interested in was what economic impact older people and women, whoops, sorry, spell the floor, older people and women kind of have on the economy. And I found a really interesting article in the Harvard Business Review. Um, I'll put a link below in case you want to read it. It was from 2019 and most of the studies that I found were from that year. It's like something big happened in 2020 and things just stopped. Not sure what that would be. Anyway, um, it basically summarises that um, at that time, women drove the world economy uh, and controlled at that time about $20 trillion in annual consumer spending. That's a lot. And that at the time was anticipated to climb to $28 trillion by 2024. It says uh, women represent a bigger growth market, sorry, a growth market bigger than China and India combined, yet they're often overlooked by companies in terms of marketing. And where they are seen, it tends to be in a stereotyp stereotypical way. So um, the one example I thought of was, do you remember those biros you could buy where the ink was still black or blue, I can't remember, but the pen itself was pink because obviously it was marketed for women as a pink pen. So just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I want a pink pen. Um, the article further breaks demographics of women into segments. Uh, for the demographic area that I fall into, um, or, well, there's two really. There's one I'm in now and there's one I'll kind of enter shortly. So there's pressure cooker is where I am at the moment, which means I'm kind of like firefighting. We've got the kids, there's so much going on. I've got my career, oh my gosh. So I'm pressure cooker at the moment. And then obviously as the kids grow up and leave home, then hopefully I'll enter the fulfilled empty nester. There were a few other ones you could go into, but that's the one I'm going for. Um, and it's so telling that parts of the descriptions for those um, are respectively, this one's for the pressure cooker, feels ignored and stereotyped. So women of my age with a lot of spending power feel ignored and stereotyped. That's exactly how I feel. And then for the fulfilled empty nesters, so probably the generation older than me, but not necessarily because it depends when you had children. Some of my contemporaries might be approaching that in the next few years. For me, it'll be slightly later because I had children later. 
they feel largely ignored by marketeers. Why, when they're worth so much money? It makes no sense. The article goes on to talk about the skincare industry and how it's evolved somewhat to address issues of ageing. So rather than everything just be, oh, moisturiser, moisturiser, you need moisture, it kind of looks at various different issues. Um, that's a weird one as well, though, isn't it? It's like, oh, the one area that we have got good at is skincare, because you shouldn't be wrinkly. So in a way, it's a positive that we've kind of evolved, but then is it? Because aren't we still just saying you shouldn't really look old now, should you? Let's give you some more products to stop that. Not sure how I feel about that. Um, a BBC article from the same year, say something must have happened in 2020, seems to be less studies in that year, um, talks more about generally, not necessarily so much about women, but how the population aged 65 and older is growing faster than all other age groups combined. And whilst in previous generations, their economic contribution uh, was largely in terms of needing services. So perhaps it might be that you needed, I don't know, meals on wheels or the like more luxurious alternative, or it might be that you needed someone to come in and care for you. Now that's not the case. Now the over 65s continue to be what they termed as full service participants. I can't say that word. Full service participants in the economy at large which basically means they've got spending power and they want to live their life. They want to go and buy things. They want to go on holidays. They want to go on days out. Um, in 2015, Americans aged 50 and older generated nearly $8 trillion worth of economic activity. Um, and there's a quote from MIT's, uh, I think his name's Co Co Coffin, I think that's his name. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, Mr. Coffin. It, to paraphrase it anyway. He says, um, he argues that oldness is a social construct that doesn't reflect how people realistically live after middle age. And he says businesses need to serve what older people actually want, not what conventional wisdom suggests they need. And I completely agree. When I look at a lot of advertising, it's anti-wrinkle stuff. It's about winding down. Oh, that's me. I don't see that as my future. I I don't know if it's a generational thing. I don't know if I'll feel different when I'm maybe a bit older and a bit more tired, but I don't feel like that. I don't feel that's what I want my future to be. So the bit that I love is that's not just for, that's not just cars for old men, which let's face it, that's one area that does get focused on, but rather fun, fashion, and far more. Yes, that's what we want. I don't want to be wearing a pair of like super comfy, untrendy sandals and comfort clothes and I don't know what do you call those like comfy trousers with the elastic AC waistband I don't want to be wearing those I want to be wearing cool clothes that I like um older online articles make similar depressing reading uh women aged 40 plus are largely overlooked by brands despite making the majority of household financial decisions um an article on CNBC suggests women hit their peak earning at 44 um, and then it talks largely about how the pandemic and astronomical childcare costs. Hello, yes. I think my second bi biggest expense after our mortgage is childcare costs. And I only put my child in childcare for two days a week. And if I could find a way around doing that so I could actually have more take home and more disposable income, I would be doing that. Uh, it is just, oh gosh. Um, so yeah, so how that is impacting. Mostly for millennials. So I'm kind of, on the cusp of millennials, I think I was the first year or the year before millennials. I'm kind of on the cusp of that anyway. Um, and then the, kind of the other bit, kind of bit of it is I made the jokey video video about it, didn't I? Things that influencers and online comments say on the internet. And I know they don't mean it in any malice. It's naivety. And I was probably exactly the same when I was their age, but it's those kind of everyday ages and comments of like, well, when I'm 40, I'm gonna have my hair cut into a nice sensible bob because that's what you do when you're 40. And they've got no idea that perhaps they won't wanna do that when they're 40. Did they wanna do certain things just because they turned 30? Probably not. Why do they think that 40 is gonna be any different? And um, why is it acceptable to decide certain social constructs just based on an age? It makes absolutely no sense. I mean, we're already looking at you know, like everyday racism, everyday sexism, things that we say and we analyse our language and think that's not an appropriate thing to say anymore because that is an everyday racist comment or an everyday sexist comment. But the same thing doesn't seem to be applied so much to ageism. Just what I'm seeing anyway. Um, we get told that we shouldn't dress in certain ways. 
there was a lady who, I think she may have been in the 60s, and she liked to wear fashionable clothes. And loads of the comments were like, why is she wearing that? Why doesn't she dress her age? How do you dress your age? Apart from when you're a baby and you're in baby grows, how do you dress your age? How do you determine when you go into the store which clothes are for you because you're a certain age? I don't understand. I think a lot of influencers are kind of in their mid thirties at the moment. And I think they'll have a bit of a shock when they get to 40 and realize not that much really changes. You're still the same person and you still just want to do the same stuff that you want to do. So yeah, I'm bored of it. I'm going to link all the articles that I've mentioned below so you can have a read. They make for interesting, this slightly depressing reading. Um, so I wanted to come back and address some of those issues really. I want to put my journalism hat on and kind of look into things a bit more in depthly, see how we can kind of affect change. And also just want to be an older face in the mixture of 30 somethings. There's nothing wrong with being a 30 something, obviously. I was a 30 something when I started this channel originally. Um, and that's great. Being 40 is great. Being 50 is great. Being 60 is great. You know, aging is a privilege, but unfortunately we take that privilege kind of aspect out of it by seeing it as a negative thing. And I'd like that to change. So this is my little stab of having a little corner of the internet to try and make that happen. Some of it's going to be political statements, some of it's going to be in-depth kind of journalism looking into things, some of it's going to be, oh, look what I'm liking this month, or look what housework I've done, look what I've done for tea, because at the end of the day, I'm a mixture of different aspects of a person, so I want you to see the everyday me as well as the anti-ages and me as well. And that's my little rant over. 40 and proud. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I hope to see you around here again soon. Bye!